Hi everyone! In this week's project, I'm going to be showing you how you can create your very own cell phone Faraday cage that will help you protect your phone from electromagnetic pulses and the prying eyes of certain government agencies. Let's get started! <laughs> All right, for this project, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a large transformer or another way of obtaining large copper strips. Next, you're gonna need a propane torch to solder the copper. You're going to need some electrical solder, which is lead-free silver bearing, although I still think normal solder would work just fine. You're gonna need flux to make the solder flow better. You're gonna need some sort of sheet metal cutting tool like these tin snips. And you're also going to need a hammer to hammer out all of the folds and bends in the copper strip. All right, so the first step is we need to measure the iPhone. So I'm currently using my iPhone 6S, which takes 4K video, to film this right now. So I'm using another iPhone 6 right here to get the measurements from. My phone has a case on it, so I'm gonna add a couple millimeters in the final numbers. The phone will, however, need to be in a case. I repeat, the phone must be in a case for the Faraday cage to work. Because if not, you can see here on the iPhone, these pieces right here are all covering the antenna. And the antenna is connected also to the body of the case. So if any part of the aluminum unibody of the phone touches the copper, the Faraday cage won't work. All right, so you may be wondering, what is a Faraday cage? And how is this thing supposed to protect me from the prying eyes of the NSA? A Faraday cage works like this. A Faraday cage is an enclosure formed by conductive material and is used to block electric fields. So the Faraday cage operates because an external electric field, like a radio wave, hitting the antenna, which is located back here on the iPhone. So the external radio wave hits the antenna and makes it vibrate at a specific frequency, the phone can't communicate any other way than over the air. The Faraday cage works because external electric fields cause the electric charges within the cage's material to be distributed so that they cancel the field's effect in the cage's interior. If the phone is completely surrounded by something conductive, when the radio wave or the electric field hits that conductive material, any signals, including GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, um, 4G LTE, 3G, any of those kinds of signals are going to be blocked by the Faraday cage. And what this means is that the phone won't be able to call, it won't be able to receive text messages, it won't be able to get location data from the GPS, and it won't be able to transmit. This is useful because if the phone can't transmit or receive, no one knows where the phone is and no one can access anything stored on the phone. It's very easy, you don't have to make any modifications to the inside of the phone, and when you want it to work again, you simply pop it out of the cage. So real quick to demonstrate this effect, I'm gonna put the phone inside aluminum foil. All right, here I have the phone and aluminum burrito. All right, here we go. No service. All right, now that that's done, let's get to building our case. Now it's nice and flat. Now all it needs is a nice sanding and polishing. It's coming along nicely. It still has some rough patches, but those will get smoothed out very soon. Power sander. All right, I finished sanding the copper strip. Now all I need to do is cut it into the right lengths. In order to get a sharp edge and a sharp bend, I went ahead and I used two clamps attached to the table, and I clamped the copper piece along with a speed square to the table, and then I'm going to use a hammer to tap out the crease. All right, so as you can see here, I've successfully bent the copper into a U shape. This right here is 14 millimeters wide, and here is, it's 102 millimeters long. 
the next step is to make a pattern for the side pieces that are gonna go into here and then solder it together. Not sure if you can see this, but I've scratched in the copper the pattern for the two side pieces. I used the digital calipers here to measure the correct distance and then held it across the edge and scratched the line in place. I used um, these flat bladed pliers and I went along the edge and at first I did it like this and started to bend it over like that. And then for the part where I couldn't reach, I went in like this and slowly bent along the length of the copper sheet. The procedure for sweating these pieces together is as follows. I take a small brush and cover it in flux. I take the flux and rub it on the pieces, on the joints. Then when that's all done, I'm gonna take the blowtorch and use that to heat up the copper. And then I'm going to use this solder right here to touch to the hot copper and it's going to melt and flow into the crack. All right, so after much hard work, the bottom of the case is done. So this right here is the test phone. My phone has a case on it, so it'll be more of a snug fit. But as you can see, it's pretty much completely enclosed. All I need to do is finish building the lid and the lid will go on right like that and it'll press on top and that will be it. Congratulations on making the Faraday cage if you made it. And if you didn't make it, thanks for watching my video. If you wanna check the effectiveness of your Faraday cage, there's a couple things you can do. One, call your phone when it's outside of the cage. Then call your phone when it's inside of the cage. You shouldn't be able to call your phone. If you can, make sure that the gap between the top and the bottom of the case is very small, less than a millimeter. If the screen is on and you can see the brightness of the screen through the case, it's not tight enough. You need to have it tight enough so that the radio signals can't pass through. If it's still not working, try wrapping a small band of aluminum foil around the seam or even some aluminum tape. And thanks so much to all you guys who are watching and supporting me. I never imagined I'd get 48,000 views on my solar powered phone charger video or even 560 subscribers just three weeks into posting videos to my channel. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, feel free to click the subscribe button and check out some of my other videos.